This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. I wanted to mention too, that, uh, he's only with the company here about a year before he's going to leave again, do a bunch of indie bookings. He does eventually, as we know, come back to WCW as both a road agent and part of the booking committee. And he's going to stay with WCW from 96 to 98 before ultimately he's going to uh, quit and he's going to come over and help Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara and rejoin the company. At that point. You're sort of running talent relations. Talk to me a little bit about how that deal came to be when he comes back to the WWF. Well, we're just trying to find something that he, we knew he had a lot of skills, but what, but what do we need right now? Right. What's our voids? What do we need right now? But it was clear to me, uh, no matter how, how high hopes WWE and their creative, uh, trio there. Uh, with Bruce, Pat, and Vince, uh, they weren't as high on him. This, this go around as they were when they created the red rooster. It's just, he didn't seem like he had any cat. He didn't have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, equity and which is unfortunate. So I didn't know what his role was going to be, but he was, uh, he's going to have to, he's going to have to do something other than being a baby face wrestler. So I just thought at that stage of his career, he had other contributions he could make that were hard to fill. So here's what will be written up in the observer. Taylor was working without an existing contract, which made all of this possible. Taylor was one of those unfortunate types caught in the middle, having to make sense out of all the egos, vetoing everything, and then taking the heat because the shows didn't make any sense and had at times been between Bischoff's whipping boy. Uh, it should help WWF as Russo who grew up as a fan, but has virtually no pro wrestling background, which has both its pluses and minuses and Ferrara who didn't are writing TV that is drawing ratings, but oftentimes the details of the storylines don't make sense and don't build anything. So I, I guess, you know, I, I hate the phrase, but you you've heard it. WWF at the time needed a quote unquote wrestling person, right? Yeah, I've heard that many times. They still need a wrestling person, but, <laughs> but go ahead. Well, I'm just saying, you know, if you think you've got these great writers, but for, for whatever reason, they don't have the wrestling experience. You need somebody who does have that experience about, okay, that's a good idea, but, uh, and, and I think sometimes that has been missing in, in some eras of different head writers. I'm not throwing stones anywhere. Just saying that still exists today, as you mentioned. But, uh, if you have a, a person like Terry Taylor, who knows a thing or two about a thing or two, he could probably check all those boxes. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. It all comes down to product knowledge. Are you going to hire anybody in your mortgage company that has not one iota of common sense or acumen about selling mortgages? No, no, no. product knowledge. Uh, you walk onto a car lot. These, these yahoos can tell you all about the radio and how to set this and how to set that. You gotta have a master's degree nowadays to operate your car. I got shit on my Lexus, but I still don't know what it means. I got buttons here, buttons there. I don't know what the hell I don't, I was looking the other day if I could figure out how my seats were air conditioned. I figured out how to turn the heat on. I couldn't figure out how to turn the cool on stuff like that for us idiots. Uh, but I, I, I don't, Terry's just, uh, you know, there's just all kinds of things, uh, that he could have done, but again, he, he had to sh- back her down a little bit. Don't be so free with your, with your verbal, your verbal contributions. You alienate too many people. And so all of a sudden, when you get involved into an alienation situation, you, uh, you know, you, you lose, you lose your focus, you lose your objectivity. And uh, I think that, I think that bit him in the ass more than once. I want to mention that, uh. He comes back when the WWF is really, really hot and well, <laughs> wrestling politics being what they were, how was he received? As far as you know, I mean, you're running talent relations Were were people bending your ear about Terry Taylor coming back in or did everybody view it as a positive? I don't know if everybody viewed him as a positive, but I didn't get a lot of uh, pushback on that whatsoever guys would make their little slide, slide, snide remarks. Well, 
You know what you get with Terry Taylor, right? JR. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll just say, yeah, sure. I know. Then leave it alone. Right. They're looking to bury somebody that I'm not looking to bury. Uh, but that wasn't that much pushback on it. You know, we had other talents that came in that there was more pushback on. There's certainly more pushback on the NWO guys coming in, uh, Kevin and Scott and, and Hulk than a uh, Terry Taylor, for example. So, uh, but I think most people just thought Terry at that point was all the stops she had made Conrad. Uh, it was much to do about nothing. He didn't have a lot of stroke. He had no stroke. So, uh, I don't think people were afraid of their position, uh, that he might take their spot. I just didn't, I don't think that was the case whatsoever. Let's, uh, mention that eventually Russo and Ferrara are going to leave for WCW in the dead of night, as it's written. Uh, we've of course talked about that a lot, but. The rumor and innuendo is Terry Taylor is going to start doing a bigger part of the writing. And of course the WWF realizes, Hey, uh, we need to make sure what just happened with Russo and Ed doesn't happen again. So the observer from October 25th, 1999 would read Terry Taylor, who was headed the group in charge of writing WWF TV shows since Russo's departure had, as of the weekend refused to sign the non-compete clause, which spread rumors that he was WCW bound. He was at the WWF tapings in Columbus, Ohio, and was scheduled for a meeting with Vince McMahon on 10 20, where he was apparently looking for a deal, which would give him more long-term security. Are you part of these conversations? Yeah. What do you remember sure. about him? That he had no leverage. Okay. You're going to do our deal or no deal, but it got you back on the, it got your Jersey back. Yeah. That's what he had a hard time understanding. Well, you know, you burnt some bridges. You are not doing your, your, uh, your reputation, any favors. So consequently you, you know, you're going to, we're going to we'll give you a shot to get back in the game, but you got to crawl before you run and you produce and do great works. Then everything takes care of itself. He just didn't see it that simplistically. And, uh, that was always, uh, you know, just again, his head. He thought too much. He's too paranoid about certain things because, and here's a great, th here's a crazy thing about this Conrad. We all knew he had skills, right? He's getting chance after chance, after chance, trying to find a job description that fits his skill set. If you're a manager, this is discussed daily. We got a good guy here. We're not quite sure where we're going to put him or her, but we, we like this person. Let's see what we can work out. And Terry came to us in that era with no leverage, uh, but we knew he had some skills. I feel strongly that saving money is important. You know, if it's not something we worry about now, boy, we are really going to worry about it later. And I want to help you get out of debt faster and do it with cheaper monthly payments. I'm talking to you. If you're in a 30 year loan, now is the time to take years off of your loan. We're routinely helping our listeners cut five, 10, even 15 years off their loan. And you can do this without perfect credit with no money out of pocket. You've just got to start at SaveWithConrad.com. That we could use if he was willing to accept that role, but there was seemingly, and I might be wrong. There's seemingly always something more. He was just concerned about this or concerned about that. And what you read there was. I think it in a nutshell, he was looking for long-term security. And sometimes that's hard to find in WWE. I was lucky. I had 26 years there, but I didn't have 26 consecutively. Right. I, had some, I had some sabbaticals and some, uh, you know, future endeavored and all that bullshit, but that's part of the, that's part of the life. You read about it all the time. Uh, and I, every walk of life, not just wrestling. So, uh, that was his issue there. I think that he, he, he was looking for long-term success and security to take care of his family. Well, Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. So you get a notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.